planking has been browned and then mostly greyed and is ready to go in on the balcony but then I've got sort of distracted putting in the vertical balcony posts that are going to support some sort of canopy. I then decided that I can't actually go much further than that because the the structure that's going to form the the roof of that will need to be built onto the floor above so the floor above is going to have to be completed before I go uh, back to that. Some bits of the balcony have been pre-painted uh, other bits I couldn't pre-paint because it would have meant waiting for things to dry um, so anyway I, I, I abandoned that knowing that I've got to do the, do the layer above first uh, this layer is going to be a warehouse I've decided uh, not exactly a warehouse a treasury um, with all, all the wizards um, takings over years of successful adventuring stuck inside uh, and the windows have been cut out and I <laughs> just noted that I've missed a panel there um, I've begun painting the wattle bits uh, it's a real pain to paint it's, it takes at least two coats uh, and then the actual woodwork takes one coat and a dry brush the whole of it later on is going to be weathered errors like whole panels that haven't had their first coat have got to be fixed uh, and then there's some faults and things that I've I've worked in so there's uh, breaks where I'm filling and holes where I've put in a little bit of the exposed uh, wattle I'm going to do something with that and here this top piece snapped when I was cutting out the window so I sort of glued that in place into its broken position uh, it's going to be a rot in this timber here that's caused that window to to collapse and there'll be some sort of temporary propping in there possibly made from this and I went into a um, an art and craft shop today which you never usually do uh, because browsing in those huge art and craft shops is a, just a waste of time. Unless you're the kind of person that hasn't got ideas and doesn't know what you want to make. When I suppose looking at actual materials um, would give you those ideas. I don't usually have that problem. So I normally buy stuff on, on uh, eBay because I'll know what I'm looking for and I'll browse there. It's much more efficient. Uh, but these... I spotted by accident, I'd gone in for lunch really, and I thought, well, I'll have a little wander around before I go back and do some more work on the project. And these were a pound, and they're actually thicker than thicker than matchsticks. I'd say those are about two, two and a half, maybe even three millilitre, millimetres, and uh, they're good and long, and they're going to be perfect for the for the rails uh, for the for the balcony railing uh, at the top and bottom of that railing I'm going to be able to drill holes in that and settle my uh, fancy cocktail sticks um, in there I don't know how I'm going to cope with the fact that uh, the balcony is all crooked so I may not use these. I may have to cut it out with foam. The problem with foam is when you poke hole in holes in foam and then you stick uh, sticks into it, it, it's going to split. That's right, sticking wooden cocktail sticks into fairly thick pieces of foam, into the little thin pieces that are of that sort of dimension, which they would be nice and flexible enough to sort of follow these irregular shapes. Um, but they, I think I would have trouble with splitting. But um, the issue now is to uh, give this another coat, which takes oh, an hour, two hours. So I sit there listening to a podcast, carefully painting these rectangles as uh, neatly as possible, trying to, not to miss any outs. 
including some exposed bits round there that are going to stick out of the tower. Ah, and then the woodwork. Uh, oh, and I also marked out the, started marking out where the end building is going to be. That's the eaves of the, the ripped away building. This is going to be designed to look like the inside of a building that's not there anymore. Um, but I do, I've more also marked out that I've got to pick all the cutouts from the uh, fourth floor. I spent the afternoon making uh, shutters by first taking tongue depressors and uh, slicing them into unequal thirds, sticking them down onto paper, uh, letting that dry, uh, and then tracing the, sh the, the, the shapes of the windows uh, onto those. The problem with all of the windows is every every prototype, every image I looked at old buildings with shutters, um, I just never, ever, ever saw shutters that were landscape format. So long windows that are more than twice the length of their height, which is actually most of them, um, need to have a, a centre bar and come out looking like that. And uh, this is the last and most fiddly of them all. Uh, that has to be stuck together with another piece um, of paper on the back. But hopefully they'll look quite uh, quite good. The next thing will be to uh, stain them and then uh, just flick a little bit of the grey paint on. Uh, then go and fit them into the building, which will inc require an awful lot of sort of final fiddly sanding well, then I've got to think about uh, hinges in sticking in and shaping the shutter bits um, this evening and uh, there's more to do with uh, do with them I need to the, the gaps around I'm not going to be able to stuff those with bits of rag this time I'm going to have to sculpt something from the inside I think just to fill those areas with you have to make up some black putty somehow uh, and then there's the uh, bolts to do or sorry the hinges um, hinges are going to be done with strips of paper like this but I'm not going to use the pin heads for nails this time I've got another idea not quite decided on. That's the really collapsed window with the broken shutters in place. The light's not very good on that. That's all right. Um, and uh, then it's to start to move on the uh, pointy bits above. These bits, I suppose they're called mini gable ends. I suppose they've got a better title than that. To start thinking about how to construct those and uh, the roof area around them. Someone's fast asleep. The airbrush turned out to be useless for uh, getting some paint down on the on the rock. Um, it's taking sort of twenty minutes to cover a few square inches so it really is an airbrush for uh, painting miniatures but I think as I spend more time teaching myself how to use it it might be okay for just doing a little bit of highlighting um, but for covering large areas um, there's no substitute for the good old paintbrush which also sort of gives you textures that you can kind of work in on an area like this. This looks that looks very, very red um, on my screen at the moment, so goodness knows what it looks like uh, when you're seeing it. This is actually the uh, the second coat. Um, it's much more it's just that this is a mixture of very cheap red and very cheap cheap uh, black acrylic paints uh, 
and it if it does what it did last night it will dry much darker and less red than it looks at the moment um, and it already to my eyes looks a lot red than it's actually looking on on screen it's very difficult to get underneath to get underneath too much but I think at some point I'm going to have to tip the whole thing on its side again which will be painful awful lot more work doing on this but it's a different kind of work it's sort of just freestyle painting uh, it's a bit more therapeutic I tend to do this right at the end of the night session Which isn't good, but you do need work to do when you're getting more tired, unless you want to stop. And this is something at this stage, just slapping on the second coat of this, where I can't really make any mistakes. It's sort of the, the rougher and the more irregular, the better. It'll be absolutely ages to get started tonight because uh, I've just been racking my brains with the problem of the the pins now when I did the doors I used actual sewing pins to make the, um, the stud rivets I really didn't want to do that on the shutters I wanted to do something smaller um, I can't I just can't get anything smaller um, nobody seems to produce tiny little plastic rivets any smaller than a pin head that I can find so I've been searching Amazon and eBay in, in the end I've decided on how I'm going to do it it's taken me just hours of thinking tonight to get to this stage if I thought that doing that floor with shutters um, instead of windows was going to save me some some time and stress I was very wrong because each one of these windows is going to have to have two hinges on each doors, door. So for that double window, there's going to be eight hinges. And all of that side and one of this side are double shuttered um, windows. It's a total of uh, 48 hinges. Uh, that's going to be 96 nails and I've just realised that I haven't included those so rather more so we're going to be over uh, over 50 hinges and we're going to be over 100 nails I can't find anything small enough so I'm going to make those nails which medieval nails sort of had kind of um, diamond shaped heads like uh, uh, a bit like the shape of a eight sided dice if you know what that is I'm just going to make uh, these uh, snakes of green stuff as as thin as I can and then when that's dried I'll, I'll just slice those up with a razor knife into uh, tiny little studs and then uh, using you can see where I've started my calculation there which I just realised is wrong um, using the, uh, the the Fiskars finger knife, which is a razor knife, uh, black paper. I'm just cutting two millimeter strips of paper. That's going to be um, the hinge itself, and then each hinge also needs a pin, which will probably just be uh, a, a, a piece of pin and. Uh, Mm. Many, many hours of work that's going to be. So it's actually 60 hinges I've got to make. 60 pins and 120 nails. So just to um, stop being overwhelmed with that, I'll show you another couple of things that are happening. I'm going to have to break it up. What on earth that, you may be asking? That is a little bit of green stuff. We've got an afternoon next week when I go to um, an art group called Art Lab and we've just changed it to be a, a sort of like shared workshop where you just sit for the afternoon and do some art in the company of other artists. And um, so I need to have something I can take with me to work on. I'm going to build the gnome. Uh, it's going to eventually be a, a lead 
gnome at the very top of the tower. So I've just made the base in green stuff, so I'll be building the the gnome onto that base, and it will be the right size, and it will uh, it will fit. Um, and the other thing is, I'm just going to give a shout out, as the American media people would call it. Um, to Marklin of Sweden. Watch Marklin of Sweden, that's M-A-R-K-L-I-N, on YouTube. He is a chap who makes um, model railways, and he's a real expert, particularly in uh, weathering. And I've been watching his uh, YouTube videos, partly to, to get sort of uh, technical ideas for this project. Um, which is on obviously on a much larger scale than model railway, railway scale. Um, most ra model railway scales, he's, he's work, working in uh, OHO, I think, and this is 28mm uh, sort of war gaming, uh, fantasy gaming scale. Um, but watching that for ideas uh, and just for entertainment, because it's, it's, it's so good, it's a very Very sort of congenial um, maker of YouTube videos. And he had a great little idea when he was doing planks for a I don't know, Swedish Swedish woodshed or something. Um, he simply did what I'd done here, which is sort of stain up and paint um, the number of planks that he needed for a project. And then takes half of them and dips those again. So, of course, what I haven't done is I haven't kept whatever the, the actual ink was. In fact, I've, I've used up all of that sepia ink. Um, I know what I know what that brown paint, uh, that uh, grey paint is. But I'm just going to take half of these, uh, and I'll use that milk bottle. I'll mix up a um, a very watery black wash, um, just so that they're different. And then when you then then when they're dry, you mix them up again. And when you lay them out. Um, you've immediately got some sort of basic variation and you then put layers of weathering over the top of that uh, which gradually knock back, knocks back that variation and that's an effect that you can only get by uh, pre-treating the planks as you go. I thought that was a great little idea and um, I love his channel, it's called Macklin of Sweden. No it's not, it's called Marklin of Sweden. With an R. Well, there's 20 hinges. I think I might um, go and do something more interesting for a while, like uh, bang my head against a wall or something. It's hard going, um, but I am pleased with the general look. I should say it's 20 hinges without the pins. Don't know how I'm going to do that yet, and of course that's before I've painted them. They're going to need painting to look like iron, and then have a little bit of rust effect on them. Slow and steady wins the race.